I knew there was more to hair than just hair. It's not just superficial. There are so many levels of complexity to it. And that's what I want to explain to people, both visually and with oral narratives. I wanted to give it the depth and the layers to it. I learned that even though each person had a unique story, there were a lot of universalities. I had a terrible haircut when I was a child. I had two ponytails, and when I was about six or seven, they were chopped off right at the base. I was mortified. Even now, I can't have super short hair. As I started doing this project, I realized it's part of a lot of women's identities. Similar types of childhood incidences have impacted them as adults. Those are not things people forget. We talk about the aesthetics of hair, but we often don't talk about the meaning behind it. I think everyone has a hair story. For some women, their hair is a signifier about their relationship with God. For others, it can act as a social construct. There are many stories of acceptance, self-acceptance, what was seen out there in the world, media, and even deemed appropriate by family members, particularly their mothers. Other stories highlight identity, freedom, aging, femininity, vanity. One story even provides examples of how we use our hair as a language. These are not a special group of women that are really into their hair. These are your friends, neighbors, the every woman. All you have to do is ask. For example, even if you don't do your hair, even that says something about you. It gives the world a little bit of information about you, and that's a part of your story. Whether you mean it to be or not, they're marked. This project started out of a project I was working on called Mothers and Daughters. I was watching how the mothers would often have small gestures of touching their daughter's hair, and this was on a subconscious level. In June 2016, I asked an almost perfect stranger about her hair and got my first hair story. She was very open to it, and that's where it all began. So the women in this project are aged 14 to 100. They're all of different ethnicities, and we just start with, tell me about your hair. My hair. I've had a problem with my hair my whole life. It's a little complicated. My mom used to cut it with the kitchen scissors. I wear wigs all the time because I love changing my I hair. I wish I had your hair, and I was like, no, you don't. I have cancer. Do you think that I'm worried about your feelings on what my hair looks like? A lot of the stories are quite emotional. The interviews are organic, and a few of the people don't even know that they're going to say these things to me. It just comes out spontaneously. One person, she said, I had an epiphany. We take our time and see what evolves. You're not necessarily going to get to know the person by hearing their voice or seeing their words or seeing their portraits, but you might understand that person better and you might understand people better and you might understand yourself better. And I think that's my goal. I think when I started, I didn't have any preconceived notions about it. I went into it fairly open-minded and I didn't know what I was gonna discover. I just knew I wanted to do it. And I'm actually having a hard time stopping. Someone once told me you'll know when to stop shooting, and I don't think I know that quite yet. It's not just about the project. I really like connecting with these women. It's really interesting to get to know their stories and to spend time with a complete stranger. I mean, how often do you sit in a room with a complete stranger in their home and take pictures with them? It's really kind of a strange thing I do. They're doing it for me, and I'm doing it for them. There's a lot of trust involved, and that's it. There's not too many things that I think I do that are like that and that they do that are like that beyond just this project itself. And so I kind of like that.